we are. And we are. And already people are are commenting that they love the story. So um, <laughs> thank you, Jessica. I'm glad you're enjoying the story. Um, it's going to start in a few moments. Uh, any, any people who, as you were arriving, while Connie and I wait for you all to integrate into our space together, um, we'd love to know where you are in the world. Um, a whole lot of people just showed up. So um, while we're waiting for a few others to show, can you tell us where you are? I know there's a little bit of a... Uh, of a um, pause before that happens. Okay, so we have some folks from Colorado are here. We have St. Paul, Western New York, Indianapolis, Connecticut, Tacoma, Michigan, Maine, Wisconsin, uh, Sebastopol, Corvallis, Sandy Hook, Plainville, hi, Maley, Charlotte, the Boston area, Revelstoke, British Columbia. That's a new name of a place that mm -hmm. I didn't know before. Some more Charlotte, some more Western New York, Arizona, Vermont, Pennsylvania, Los Angeles, New Hampshire, Pittsburgh, Massachusetts, Louisiana, Virginia, and more Pittsburgh, White Mountains, Toronto, Portland, Woodacre, Idaho, Sedona, my word. So, Connie, we have people coming from all over. Some more Colorado, some more Pittsburgh. The lion's share seem to be Pittsburgh. Do you have a relationship with people in Pittsburgh? <laughs> well, my, my brother lives in um, Hamburg, okay. <laughs> Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. You never know. A lot of, a lot of. Uh, okay, well, here's, here's your Florida. Florida's here. Awesome. Right. Yeah, a few Floridas. The villages. Right. Yeah. Nice. Oh, the villages. Oh, great. And New Brunswick and more Portland and Plainville. Well, everyone, if you happen to be in the Central Time Zone right now, Connie, I think this has happened already for you. Did you happen to look outside as the sun was setting? Absolutely did, yeah. And what did you see? Mm -hmm. Well, it was a beautiful rosy glow, and I was thinking about the the story of the Canterbury Elk, of course. I think mostly what struck me in Florida, they have such beautiful sunsets. Anyway, it's all sky because they you don't have mountains, or, mm. but that it's like the the sky and the clouds become the mountains. So it was a lovely, um, peaceful rosy glow mm. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. How about you? you haven't? When is your sunset? Well, um, I have a targeted reason for asking this. Um, the sun is setting uh -huh. right now. And uh -huh. um, what's happening is that Jupiter and Saturn have combined forces oh, right. to create what some are calling Christmas star. And at least in the central time zone, you need to be able to, uh, um, we only have a window of about 20 to 30 minutes to be able to see it, at least here in Texas, before the uh, that planetary formation hits the horizon. So um, a lot more people have let us know where they are. And we do have South America here, so that's good to see. Wonderful. Um, my next question, though, is have you seen this, uh, um, the, what is it being called? The Great Convergence, I think, or the Christmas star or the, uh, the extra solstice planetary event that has made a particularly bright looking star in the sky. I wonder if any of you saw it right? or are looking forward to seeing it if you're further west than I am. Yep. Yeah. We have some people so excited to see you and I together, Connie. You, I've known you far longer than you've known me. <laughs> I paid attention to your work while I was teaching in uh, Monadnock Waldorf School and then at Lake Champlain Waldorf School and uh, attended. Um, I don't know that I officially took a class with you unless did you teach teachers? You did, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> 
puppetry. Um, I, I have done some support with storytelling, but primarily the puppet storytelling. But um, I've been listening to Sparkle Stories for quite a while myself and um, telling people about you. <laughs> we have what wonderful overlap we have. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know why this hasn't occurred to me sooner for us to collaborate. It seems like a, um, an obvious collaboration. And I hope maybe we can do more of this in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah, that would be great. I have a note here from Australia that the indigenous people here in Australia have an important and unique sacred event with Uluru at this time. So in the Southern Hemisphere, there is a sacred event happening as well as the, uh, as the solstice. I'd be very mm -hmm. curious about that. Uh, I'm not familiar with Uluru. Is that familiar to you, Connie? Mm -hmm. No, okay. And uh, we have some people that are here from Waldorf schools, which is very exciting. Well, yes, mm -hmm. um, we are being a part of people's solstice festival this evening, as well as their celebration of the stars and um, the uh, Uluru, Uluru event that I'm just now learning about. So um, Ayers Rock. Okay. Ayers Rock. I will look into that, Veronica. Thank you for letting me know. So tonight is a story that actually precedes Sparkle Stories. This is a story that I told at the Winter Festival at Lake Champlain Waldorf School while I was a teacher. And I created it for the Winter Festival and never knew that it would be one day become a Sparkle Story and become so popular with people. Uh, it was um, written as, a, as an Advent story initially, but then it became very clear that it was, it was a solstice story. And um, when Connie and I were talking, uh, we were thinking about different stories we could tell. And then I remembered Candleberry and sent it to her. I got her enthusiastic yes um, mm -hmm. for us to collaborate with that. So many of you are familiar with the story, but you have not experienced it this way. And I got to experience it for the first time yesterday. And you are in for a treat. So what we're going to do is I am going to fill the screen with uh, Connie, her puppets, and that beautiful landscape. You won't see me anymore, but you'll be able to hear me. So let's do that first. There we have it. There's Connie. And do you have a friend, Connie? This is my friend, Owley. Owley, he was actually made by another friend of mine who is um, a shepherdess. So this is her own wool that she used and she sure. felt at him. Aldi is part of my the parent child program that I um, teach in um, the Waldorf School of Tampa Bay. Aldi is our companion. <laughs> the children love him. And um, can you can you you can still hear me, Connie? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, can you tell uh, those of you who are, uh, and I should probably do this for Sparkle as well, because I know a lot of, of people that follow you are probably hearing my voice for the first time. Can you tell the people who are from Sparkle a little bit more about your world and how they can learn more about you? Yes. Um, I actually I have a Facebook page, Starlight Puppets, and I have a blog, starlightpuppets.blogspot.com. And um, in there I have... Um, I just put in an offering, um, and also I have um, some materials and resources that can be supportive for programming. And yeah, I, I do um, virtual puppet stories. I have a puppet story um, seasonal series, and including like patterns and songs um, oh, to help make puppets for home. Yeah. Well, it's pretty easy to find you uh, putting in mm -hmm. either Conanson um, and or Starlight Puppets. You, you come right up. So um, I do encourage you all to go to the Facebook page and to her blog and then also see. Um, yes, uh, there's a mention about the mic, but the, the, the news is that you were just going to be hearing me pretty much. And uh, we're going to be watching Con and her puppets. So I think we should begin. How do you feel about that? Sounds good. 
Okay. Yes, and if I could comment from the people listening to make sure that you can hear me just fine, if you could just give a thumbs up or a yes, we can hear you. I would appreciate that in the comments. Takes a moment. And as soon as I see that, then I'll know all is well. Okay, lots of thumbs ups and we can hear you. All right, everyone. So we are going to tell the story of the Candleberry Elf. And Connie, you'll let me know when you are all set up and ready to begin. And we'll... Mm -hmm. Oh, was that a yes? That's a yes. Yes, okay. indeed. <laughs> there you go. The Candleberry Elf. In the backyard of an old farmhouse tucked between a mock orange and a lilac tree was a candleberry bush. It was planted there years ago by an old woman who lived in the farmhouse with her old husband. She had planted it as a gift to the birds as she had heard that birds liked candleberries and she liked birds. So she planted it along with a hackberry and a honeysuckle in hopes to increase the amount of birds that visited her backyard. And it certainly worked. The birds came in multitudes to eat and drink hackberry and honeysuckle and other flowers and shrubs she had planted. Strangely, however, they did not eat the candleberries. Year after year, the pile remained untouched, fattening and purpling with no disturbance. And then, every year, close to the time of the full moon, the berries would all disappear. And they would be gone. The old woman noticed this and wished to find out where they all went. A bird? A creature of some sort? She never found out why, but it became a kind of marker to the ear. When the candleberries were gone, that meant that autumn was coming to an end and the darkest night of the year was a few weeks away. This was a special night for the old woman and her husband. And they celebrated every year with lighting candles and telling stories. They would make a wide wreath out of pine and fir boughs and place several candles within. They would also place candles around the house in every window. And then once the sun set, would light a candle, bringing their own light to the darkest and longest night of the year. The wreath and the candles were in her picture window, and when she lit them, it would shine out into the backyard and her sleeping garden. Now, What she did not know was that the garden she illuminated on that darkest of nights was hardly asleep. The plants had certainly retreated back into the earth. The trees had dropped their leaves and the nuts and berries had been gathered and stored by the creatures of the wood. But the garden and surrounding forest was still teeming with activity. The fairies were there. 
pixies, imps, elves, brownies, and gnomes of every variety were spread throughout the garden. For many of them, nighttime was a very busy time indeed, and the longest and darkest night of the year was an especially big night. Many of the flower fairies were busy dancing the dreams of nearby children. The tree elves were whispering stories to the bare branches of their trees, and gnomes, gnomes, were underground crafting magic into brightly colored stones. Every fairy had its task, and one of them watched the old woman and her husband light their candles with particular interest. This was, of course, the Candleberry Elf. He sat in his cozy workshop, tucked between two thick roots of the Candleberry bush, and looked to the cottage. Every year he would wait until the old woman and the old man began to light their candles. Then he would light his own candles. You see, this was the task of the Candleberry Elf. He was to make the candles for this festival of lights lit on the darkest night of the year. All the fairies would wait in an eager anticipation for the candles to be lit. Every year they would pause from their many tasks, tending their plants, crafting their stones, dancing in dreams and riding the wind to be still and quiet and looked at the lights. During this long night, the darkest night of the year, the fairies and people would share something together. Gratitude for the light. They all offered the light of their candles as a gift to each other and to the world. But this year something happened. Everything began as it had always begun since the candleberry bush first produced berries. The birds and the forest animals did not eat the candleberries as they tasted like it might taste if one took a bite out of sour chunk of wax, not very tasty indeed. So the candleberry bush remained filled with berries even after its leaves had turned rusty red and fallen off in autumn. The Candleberry Elf waited until the full moon of deep autumn and then began the harvest. Every berry was plucked and brought to his workshop and underground between the bushes' roots. There he had a chandlery with a big iron pot formed by magic blue flames. He tossed several berries into the pot and cooked them until they were melted into a jam. He then ceased the fire and let it cool. In time, ample wax from the berries would rise to the surface and harden while the berry mash remained below. The crafty elf would then pull out the disk of wax and pile it in his workshop. The jam was poured into shallow bowls and put out for the birds. They loved the jam, now devoid of the gummy wax, and they gobbled it up every morning. The Candleberry Elf maned at his chandlery until every berry was boiled of its wax and he had enough to begin candle making. He used cotton wood fibers spun into wicks to dip into the blue-purple wax from the candleberries. This took some time, and the Candleberry Elf was a patient fellow. He seldom rested or left his chandlery as he dipped the candles again 
and again until every drop of wax was used. He always finished mere hours before the eve of the longest and darkest night, and he spent those hours watching. He was watching the window. He was watching to see the old woman and her husband light their first candles. It was this moment when the Candleberry Elf knew it was time to light his own candles. He lit them in the yard, and they shimmered and twinkled like little stars. The fairies of that area all stopped their tasks and activities to be still for a while, marveling at the lights in this darkest time of the year. The fairy world became still and quiet, all eyes sparkling with the tiny lights of candles. But this year, something happened. Something the Candleberry Elf did not expect. Hours before the sun set, the Candleberry Elf sat in his chandlery accounting his work. The workshop was filled with the spicy fragrance of the candleberry wax as he prepared the candles for lighting. And then he perched in the nook of the candleberry bush and looked to the house. He saw the smoke coming out of their chimney and the yellow lights flicker on inside. The sun was beginning to set and the sky to darken. Soon, he thought, soon they will light their candles and the festival of lights will begin. So he waited. It got darker. He waited. It got darker still. Hmm. No candles. In fact, he didn't see any movement at all inside. The lights were on, so he knew that they were home, but no one was coming to the windows or even walking by. He waited. The birch elves stopped by to inquire about the candles. Ice fairies wondered if they should begin to freeze the brook. Gnomes came to the surface to complain. Where were the lights? The Candleberry Elf told them all the candles were coming. He would light them soon, and he looked once more to the house. Nothing. No candles. He heaved a sigh and took out his own candles. He placed one at the base of the candleberry bush. And then he readied to light it. He stood over the candle, still about to light it, when a thought came to him. Go to the house. So he did not light the candle. Instead, he gathered his bundle of candles wrapped and wrapped the bundle in a twine of dried grass. And then he made his way to the farmhouse. He pulled the bundle behind him and made his way to the house. Then he climbed a sleepy morning glory vine to a window. He looked inside. At first he did not see anything. The flames were roaring in the fireplace and all was still. But then he spotted a bed by the hearth and he saw someone lying in the bed. It was the old man. Sitting on the bed was the old woman. She was tenderly wiping his forehead with a cloth. Her face looked sad and worried. 
than the Candleberry elf understood. The old man was sick. The old woman had been so busy caring for him that she forgot the candles, so that was it. The elf climbed back down to the ground. He looked up at the dark sky and saw all the stars opening and sparkling their night. It was their night, the longest of the year. He smiled to the starlight and, and then he knew what to do. He took the bundle of candles over to the small cat door at the base of the back door. And then he pushed through the door and into the house. It was warm and glowed golden in the firelight. He could hear the crackling of the fire and the sound of the old woman speaking quietly. He could not understand her words, but he could tell that she was reassuring the old man. The elf placed one of his candles in a nearby window. It stood upright and ready. He then lit the candle with his blue fairy fire, and it offered a magical glow. The Candleberry Elf placed a candle in every window around the small house and lit it with his blue fairy fire. And finally, the elf climbed the fireplace bricks to place one on the hearth mantle. He wanted the old man to see the candlelight from his bed. He slowly and carefully pulled himself up brick by brick until he reached the wooden mantle, and then he looked down at the old man. The man looked very tired. He was breathing slowly. The Candleberry elf watched him along with the old woman for a long time. And then he positioned the candle and lit it. He stood back to look at the flame, and then he heard a noise. It was a low kind of rumbling noise. He looked around and saw that it was coming from the old man. He was awake now, and he was looking directly at the Candleberry Elf. And he was smiling. The sound was laughter. It was quiet laughter. The old woman started speaking to him and then looked up at the mantle as well. She smiled and walked to the candle. Now, she could not see the Candleberry Elf standing right next to the candle. It seemed that only the old man could see him. She picked up the candle and studied it. It was small and beautiful, and the smell. She took a deep breath in. It smelled like a cold mountain forest, minty, but also spicy. She held it out to the old man. He took a breath and then looked back at the elf. They looked at each other for a while, and the old man winked at him. Then the man smiled at the old woman and they laughed together. The elf smiled and made his way down the fireplace. As soon as the Candleberry Elf was outside, he realized 
he had used all his candles. There were no more for the fairy festival of lights. He wasn't sure what to tell them all. The fairies all looked forward to this night. As he approached the garden, however, he saw something unexpected. Speckling the ground, the branches of the trees, the tips of the dried stalks of plants, were shimmering little lights. They were sparkling like tiny candles everywhere, sparkling like a thousand tiny candles. As he got closer, he saw all his friends. Grass fairies, tree elves, brownies, nymphs, and gnomes were all out and smiling at him. They knew where he had been and what he had done. And they decided together that this year they would bring him the light. After so many years of the Candleberry Elf bringing light to the fairies on this, the darkest night of the year, they decided this year it was their turn. So the Candleberry Elf and all his friends were still and silent together, feeling thanks for the lights sparkling around them and for the friends who bring it. Good night, Candleberry Elf. Wow. See, isn't that just the perfect way to experience the Candleberry Elf story? What a beautiful experience. <laughs> what a beautiful story. Oh, uh, oh, I hope... Oh dear, I, I apologize if there was some sound issues, everyone, but it sounds like some of you were able to hear it just fine and others had a bit of a sound problem. So we're going to learn from that. We will make sure <laughs> that we always work through all the new technology that we have at our disposal. This is a great platform and we're gonna learn some new things. Oh my word, that moment with the old man just nodding his head ever so slightly. It was just beautiful, just beautiful. So, so lots of so good, I loved it. Sound is good here, great, it was great. Thank you so much. Thank you from California, sounded good, beautiful, fine here, it was wonderful. Lovely, thanks, it was great. Thank you so much, so good, I loved it. And uh, thank you, your gifts are truly magical. I'm so grateful, wonderful. Oh, everyone, uh, now we're getting lots of people saying that they 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 heard it perfectly. So I think it's just with certain certain sound systems, maybe it didn't come through as well. Thank you, thank you. Monroe Falls says thank you. Oh, wonderful. Now I do encourage you all, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with Connie or if you've heard of her but have never really looked into all that she offers, do go to her Facebook page and go to her blog because I know there's at least one video of, um, of, uh, of the puppet show that you shared with me. I forget the name of the song, Over the Meadow? Mm -hmm. Over in the Meadow, yeah. Meadow, yes. Um, so go there and, and watch that wonderful, it's a song, and she does a puppet show to the song. Oh, nice. It was magical, sharing this beautiful, magical tale. I'm sorry, Connie, that you can't see all these comments, but <laughs> there's a lot of love coming through. Well, I hope that you in the West have a chance to see this incredible you know, combination of planets. I hope you all are able to take your own light into this darkest night because uh, tomorrow 
the world begins to gain in light from a uh, longer days and um but everyone around us can always benefit from our gifts um, during especially during this season especially during this year so I hope that you can spread your own light and your kind words and gratitude to everyone around you. Um, Connie, what is your Facebook page called? We have a question. Oh, yes. It's, it's under Starlight Puppets. You'll find Starlight it there. S-T-A-R-L-I-T-E. -S yes. Yeah, that's how it's spelled. Mm -hmm. Different kind of light. Mm -hmm. uh, wonderful. Love to hear more. So you'll have lots of visitors very soon. Um, well. Everyone, have a wonderful evening. Happy solstice. Enjoy this uh, Advent season. Uh, Hanukkah is over, so I hope you had a nice Hanukkah. And Christmas is ahead, so Merry Christmas to you all. Um, and Connie, I hope we can do this again. This was really lovely. That would be wonderful. It was a pleasure, a true pleasure uh, to be able to share and work with you. Thank you yeah. so much. And, and thank you, everyone who came, who tuned in. Thank you all, everyone. Have a great night. Blessings.